Hello Buglers and welcome to issue 4299 of the world's leading and only audio newspaper for a visual world, The Bugle, with me, Andy Zaltzman. No, not me from your perspective of course, but I, I do tend to see these things from a very self-centred standpoint or, or sit, <laughs> sit point. Uh, anyway, what is the self these days? Is it time to ban the concept of self and force people to live in the third person? Andy Zaltzman certainly thinks so. He's changed his mind on that in the last 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> feels all the better for it it's whatever time of day it is where you are right now but it wasn't when we recorded the show uh, or at least it wasn't yet it was however the 14th of april and uh, i am joined sorry slip back into that egotistical selfhood again all habits and all that i am joined or i was joined from your perspective this is getting too complicated by just two of the eight billion or so people who were ruled eligible to be bugle co-host this week uh, chris i think we might need to tighten our vetting process get it down to one or two billion simplify things but i'm delighted that those two are in inverse order of north to south latitude um, is it latitude or longitude? I can never remember uh, in the southern hemisphere's famous Longitude's Australia the long one <laughs> the, um, this, what the, shall I just start again in the southern hemisphere's famous Australia region it's Alice Fraser and way up north or two miles up north from where I am in the shed uh, it's Nish Kumar uh, hello both of you Hello, hello. I'm also, I should mention that I'm not uh, the one making uh, old man grunting noises. It is my <laughs> small child. <laughs> um, that was your wrestling name, wasn't it, Nick? Old man grunting noises? <laughs> <laughs> Undefeated. Still the champion. <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, Alice's um, uh, latest uh, uh, child, the, the sequel... Um, has featured on a, a couple of recent bugles uh, in action <laughs> once again, um, and I don't know what because yeah, as we discussed, he, he passed some physical satire on the world in a previous uh, previous bugle. Uh, what do you think he's got lined up today, Alice? Um, I, I cannot wait to find out. I feel like that's I, uh, whatever he does, I'll find charming, and no one else will. I feel like that is the rule. <laughs> You can have two. You can have one thing, Andy. You can have okay. one of two things. Yep. Uh, one, you can have me on maternity leave, or two, you can have no baby, but you can't have them both at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> what have I always said about football players and buglers? If you're good enough, you're old enough. <laughs> Alice's baby is good enough to bugle. Get him on the bugle. There's a fucking baby on the bugle. <laughs> He okay. tops our demographic <laughs> listenership by at least 10 years, I reckon. <laughs> this, this is how we get the next generation on. I've been saying you need to get more Gen Z co-hosts. Arguably, you've overshot by a good sort of 18 years, and you've got slightly too young. I think you've gone back round to whatever Generation A is again. But let me... This is how we breed the next generation. This kid yep. is going to be doing pun runs and overusing the word c before we know what's what. <laughs> Well, luckily that was bleeped out, so he couldn't understand it. So let's, uh, <laughs> yeah, Chris is really working the live bleep this week. Normally he edits them in, but because of the presence of a baby, Chris's bleeping finger is working yeah. overtime. The <laughs> finger's going to fall off. Yeah, a section two. Yeah, I mean, occasionally just any word beginning with a, a hard C or an F just gets bleeped out because he's got to he's got to act fast. But um, um, I hope no one talks about c trees. <laughs> This I've week. got a funky cough. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nish, how, how have you been? It's been a while since you, uh, you uh, were not available for the live tour. How have you been? Uh, yeah, I guess I've been pretty good, Andrew. I've been uh, I've not reproduced, which obviously right. puts me uh, one down uh, yeah. on this podcast. Now that this podcast is podcast exclusively of child producers, <laughs> uh, I am... Um, I, I, yeah, I... I, I I don't know where I've been, to be honest with you, Abby. Right. I feel like I've had the last few weeks, I've achieved very little. Yeah. I've been giving my opinions on things. Yeah. <laughs> Nish, I would like to take issue with your suggestion that anyone in this Zoom room but me has actually produced a trial. Yeah, that's right. Come yeah, yeah. Team There's game, Alice. Shot. Team game. It's a team, team game, game, Alice. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on. It's a team game. The striker doesn't Cheering get... from the bench at best. <laughs> yeah. Tag me in, coach. Physically impossible. <laughs> <laughs> One person has produced a child, and the other two were harrowed witnesses. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, actually, Andy did catch one of them. Oh, I did catch one of them. Yeah. In absolute fairness, Andy yeah. did catch one of them. Yeah, I did. 
uh, super catch, soft hands. Um, the, uh, if someone in the audience catches one, you get to keep it, right? That's the rule. <laughs> I think so. I, did, I, I can't remember if I mentioned this on the Beagle before, but in an Edinburgh show I did when my first child was uh, a few months old, I had an awards ceremony. In fact, just before the Beagle began, um, I had an awards ceremony in the second half um, in which I awarded myself an award. for something. I can't remember what it was, but it was like giving out awards for, I can't remember, stupidest people in the world or whatever um and anyway so i thought uh, um my wife brought the baby in uh towards the end of the last show of the run and i thought it'd be funny to <laughs> get the baby on stage like alex higgins when he won the world yeah. snooker championship yeah. in the 1980s I thought it'd be like quite a funny moment quite a touching moment of of um you know, father baby bonding uh the baby however disagreed in extremely vocal terms with this and <laughs> <laughs> just started bawling <laughs> so what i thought would be quite a touching moment became child cruelty but you know there you go. <laughs> is this the same one of your children that said you were too silly to be a patriarch yes oh. yeah but that was uh, that was a solid six or seven years later so yeah. every single element of that detail is is pure zolt <laughs> Bringing a baby on stage, already a mistake. But also, the fact that the baby was brought on stage in reference to Alex Higgins winning the World Snooker title. Everything about that. Bit that everything, that cocktail of parental negligence and obscure sporting <laughs> referencing is pure no, Zaltzman. What, you, know, you know, that's what you've got to do as a parent. You've got to introduce them to who you are as a person early in their life. Um, anyway... Shall we crack on with the show? We are recording on the 12th of April, uh, 2024. Uh, tomorrow, the 13th of April, it will be happy 281st birthday to one of America's founding daddies. Is that too informal? Dads? F fathers? Co-parents. Let's go with that. Uh, Thomas T.J. Jazzy Jefferson uh, would have been 281 if he hadn't, uh, sadly, spoiler alert, died. Uh, he was the third president of the USA, and his place in the top 10 best ever presidents lists uh, looks pretty secure for now. Um, there don't seem to be too many challengers uh, who might <laughs> knock him down the rankings. Although it was a bit easier to be a good president in the pre-mass media days when it took someone several weeks and at least one horse uh, to tell you that you were the worst <laughs> in the history of the universe. Um, well bleeped again, Chris. Uh, uh, and uh, 14th, uh, Sunday the 14th of April, well, 14th of April was a bad day for Abraham Lincoln. Um, one of Jefferson's uh, successes in 1865, um, picked up a bit of a theatre-going injury. Uh, historians have recently uncovered uh, Linky's review of that play, Our American Cousin, at Ford's Theatre in Washington, D.C., written uh, on his deathbed, and the review was this. I'm all in favour of experimental theatre, breaking the fourth wall and challenging the audience, making them contemplate the way things are and the way things could be by stretching the boundaries of art, but frankly... <laughs> That went at least one step too far. Special effects were good, though. Arguably too realistic. Two stars. Um, <laughs> as always, a section uh, of uh, the bugle is going straight in the bin this week. Uh, this week, a uh, special Pompeii section. Some exciting new discoveries have been made at the ancient volcano-preserved Roman sites of Pompeii. Uh, near Naples, they found, uh, well, as always, some uh, some naughty frescoes. Uh, the Romans, of course, not afraid of porno graffitiing the shit out of a wall. But not everything they left behind when Vesuvius got its uh, Vulcan noodles boiling up good and poppy was quite so racy. In fact, only an estimated 88% of uh, all Roman relics are, in fact, pure unadulterated filth um so amongst the 12 percent uh, well there's a fresco of um, well actually this is more in the 88 percent a fresco of the multi-franchise celebrity god apollo trying to seduce the trojan priestess cassandra um this was a genuine genuine find um, um and it's quite a simple piece well cassandra uh, of course famously cursed to tell the truth but for no one to believe her and looking at this picture of apollo naked but for a cloak draped over one shoulder the truth she might be telling him that he is choosing not to believe is that yes it does look really very small um amongst the uh, amongst pictures available on the internet amongst the latest discoveries uh, also are a scroll containing secret plans for a lunar catapult um <laughs> that uh, the uh, Emperor Nero had developed uh, a couple of decades previously. A time machine, apparently built in the year 2291, 
and then repaired in 2143. Uh, plus traces of uh, American eternal life obsessive Brian Johnson's underpants. Read into that what you will. Uh, they found a slice of very burnt toast, which if you look at it from a certain angle, has the face of Nigel Farage on it. And uh, also the body of a, of a politician from, um, from Pompeii, preserved for all eternity by the eruption, in the middle of a speech in which he is not only denying that there is anything to worry about, but also claiming there is no such thing as a volcano. Uh, some things uh, never change. Also, uh, there was a report about the Middle East situation, which was pretty shit back then. Uh, to be fair, some things, well, many things uh, never change. And also, what looks like a very hastily painted picture of a man pointing at an erupting volcano and mouthing what looks like a very rude Roman swear phrase that roughly translates, if my memory serves, as holy f***ing f***strigils who pulled Vulcan's finger. Mm. <laughs> so, uh, some amazing finds uh, being made. And to mark uh, this uh, incredible, these incredible finds, um, and it's amazing to think, actually, that you know, without... Vesuvius, we wouldn't have discovered ancient Rome at all. Um, but in fact, the Vesuvius hasn't had a major eruption since 1944, which I think is something to do with EU health and safety regulations. <laughs> or, uh, or Vesuvius being so worried about the social media backlash if it erupts again that it just doesn't think it's worth the hassle. But anyway, to mark this discovery, we are giving you buglers your own audio Vesuvius eruption. In 52 weekly instalments over the next year, you can recreate the famous 79 AD eruption to mark the 1,945th anniversary of the superstar Kano blowing its cranky top. Um, uh, these 52 instalments will lead up to the eruption and its aftermath. And here is part one of your Vesuvius audio story. Oh, there you go. Uh, it, it does get a bit more exciting uh, as uh, as things. <laughs> <laughs> I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The guy in Pompeii who has forever been immortalised with his hands on his dick. <laughs> look it up. Most relatable figure in human history. <laughs> Absolutely, the most relatable figure in human history. I know that there are some quote unquote scientists who have said it's possible that his hands were not on his dick, and it's just. <laughs> It's just fallen that way, and it's just bur- it's a trick of the burial. But what is more likely that that has happened, or someone has looked out of the window, seen the end coming, and thought, <laughs> "One more for the road, lads." <laughs> <laughs> History, history's most relatable figure, the man who masturbated at the site of Vesuvius erupting. Well, you know, also Cassandra was probably impressed by Apollo's as. Uh, small penis didn't they like a sort of a dapper gentlemanly little penis back in the day <laughs> well it does seem from the, the sculptures they were very trendy miss uh, my and, era and many of the frescoes <laughs> <laughs> mine's gentlemanly it always wears a top hat miss my era <laughs> i think mine had its top hat chopped off pretty early <laughs> early, <isn't it? laughs> um family show family show right well family Chris. show myself <laughs> Chris, uh, Chris was complaining about how long it took us to get to the top story during the live tour but I think in terms of non-live shows we're pretty much hitting the 15 minute mark here Chris yep. um, <laughs> are you proud well I don't know I think I mean I think th- the intros to the bugle have got longer over the years and I think it's probably like a subconscious desire to avoid having to talk about actual news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this isn't ill discipline, Chris. It's satire, okay? Yeah. It's structural it's, satire. It's, and it's self preservation. It's emotional yeah. self preservation. Yeah. And, and I, I will also notice that as we get into the news section, Alice has symbolically taken the baby away from the recording <laughs> station. And that makes total sense. Get the baby away from the news. He, he, he did a massive poo. So. <laughs> Respect. Respect. <laughs> Top story this week. The world has been plunged into darkness. All light extinguished, bar some slight flickers, as if to reproach us all for the wrongs that have led to this. Surely a divine punishment for what humanity has wrought upon itself and its planet. Oh, it's fine again just a few minutes later. Uh, Yes, it was Eclipse Week. A great week for fans of celestial metaphors. But was this week's eclipse a warning sign from a higher being? that now is the time to repent and repair our planet, or next time we will be truly doomed to an eternal chasm of inescapable nothingness. 
Well, to analyse and interpret the seemingly inexplicable phenomenon that was the eclipse, isn't it lucky that I have two of the absolute best celestial harbinger interpreters on the portents and augury divination circuit today, Alice and Nish? Uh, I mean, obviously science can't explain shit like this, so what would you... How would you two interpret what we saw over North America this week? Well, Andy, it's an extraordinary thing when when the universe lines up a cosmic trick shot of <laughs> boys that are That's the language I can understand. rotating around in the void. <laughs> oh, oh my god. <laughs> Alice, even you are making snooker references now. <laughs> too brute. <laughs> I so this is the problem, you know. There was an eclipse. I was told that I didn't know there was an eclipse coming. I've been trying to get off my phone, so I didn't know. I didn't know that it was arriving, and I had already sacrificed like six maidens before I thought to Google it. I realised it was meant to be happening, and it was going to go away. Though luckily for the maidens, it was over quicker than you'd expect. So there were only about sixty percent sacrificed, which was embarrassing to walk back. Um, Actually, I am in Australia, so I'm not in the path of the eclipse. I was told once never to look at an eclipse, uh, so I've been avoiding all photographic evidence of the eclipse. I've just been <laughs> asking my friends <laughs> what it looked like. Uh, Nish, how would you in- in- interpret interpret the eclipse? Oh, I see what's happened here. Yep. Darkness covering light. This is an act of cosmic wokeism, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> this is political correctness gone insane. The white sun being obscured by the darker moon. Oh, I see. Hitting quotas, are we? Space? (laughs) Unbelievable. And then to add a layer on top of that, we've got to look at it through special glasses. (laughs) Oh, no. This this happened in North America, the continent of freedom. (laughs) A part of those freedoms is the freedom to look directly at the sun until your retinas Burn to uselessness. <laughs> Every act of this is evidence of a culture of wokeism, the woke mind virus, that has gotten run absolutely amok. It's infected space. It's infected glasses. Where will it stop, Andrew? Right. Well, I, 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 I don't know, but I mean, if America is burning its retinas, I think that would complete the full set of cri- critical <laughs> faculties that it's lost in, in recent years. Um, well, Amazon had to recall a bunch of eclipse glasses for being completely non-functional, and uh, Googling of, oh, my eyes hurt has gone up by about 50% in some affected areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. How long supposed to see sun? Um, in terms of how it compared with other eclipses for me it was a bit disappointing it didn't really do anything new or unexpected it was the same old same old really very derivative of uh, other eclipses i mean sure that's maybe what the eclipse fans want but i prefer to see something that pushes the envelope a little bit further through the letterboxes um my main beef with it was i didn't really see the point of it uh because it was so short sure it got dark but there was hardly time to have a cheeky nightcap pop my pyjamas on, hop into bed, do a crossword, <laughs> read a page or two of The Very Hungry Caterpillar, and then settle down for a nice long snooze <laughs> in my normal nocturnal ritual. Um, or, you know, that might be not your thing. Maybe you didn't even have time to race to your local nightclub and get your groove on all night long, Nish. Um, but um, yeah. <laughs> it was four minutes of piss-poor pseudo night for me. Not impressed. One star. Um, but if you missed the solar eclipse buglers due to being in the wrong place in the world, as uh, the three of us were, um, don't worry, there is a regular daily earthular eclipse in most parts of the world when one side of the earth blocks the light out from the sun from the other side of the earth um, so you can enjoy that if you missed out on the uh, the rarest solar eclipse i'm not surprised you weren't a fan of the eclipse Andy, because uh, y- 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 for you that's pretty conservative play just playing for snookers by obscuring <laughs> the view of the sun and you would have att- you would have preferred a more audacious three planet plan by trying to knock if the moon had tried to knock the sun into venus now yeah. i'm making snooker jokes <laughs> this podcast has too many american listeners for us to be doing this <laughs> Uh, the next um, total eclipse was uh, scheduled to take place on the 12th of August 2026 across parts of Europe. A combined bid by Iceland, Spain and Portugal secured the rights to a two-minute long eclipse. 
Um, but we are just hearing that the rights to that 2026 uh, eclipse have just been bought up by the Saudi Arabia Public Investment Fund. And the, <laughs> the trajectory of the eclipse will now travel instead over the Arabian <laughs> Peninsula, circling around Riyadh four times before disappearing off into the Indian Ocean. Um, apparently it was just eye-watering the amount of money they threw at it. Too good for the cash-strapped moon to turn down on the sun. Sure, the sun's raking it in from the solar power boom already. It doesn't need the money. But as we all know, there are generally only two things that the already hyper-wealthy want in life more and more so i'm afraid uh, <laughs> trips fans in uh, the iberian peninsula you're gonna have to go to uh, saudi arabia i don't I like really had the wrong idea about eclipses yep. andy because of the amount of like extremely trashy adventure books i read as a kid i was pretty sure they happened basically any time you were being uh, menaced with being eaten by a slightly problematically described tribe <laughs> basically <laughs> Make a make an eclipse happen, and their their primitive fear would cause them to release you into the narrative. <laughs> ah, the spicy smelling dwellers of the Shadowlands. <laughs> <laughs> Bold title for your first Edinburgh show. I thought. Um, <laughs> Listen, the reviews reflected it. Um. <laughs> I, the, I don't like a partial eclipse because it suggests a failure of conviction on Bonnie Tyler's behalf. <laughs> Every time I hear it, it feels like it's partial eclipse of the heart, like she's just given up. Yep. Turn around, if you want. Yep. I mean, also, a total eclipse of the heart is really just, well, that's something that passes in a few minutes, isn't it? And then you get, get back to normal. Not, not all it's cracked up to be. Um, <laughs> in uh, what an exciting development in terms of the TV coverage uh, of the eclipse, a Mexican news <laughs> outlet... <laughs> Um, was um, sharing uh, footage that had been submitted by, by viewers and accidentally <laughs> showed what can only and accurately be described as a man's ball sack um, <laughs> after a prankster sent in footage uh, featuring uh, his, uh, his nudges. Um, I mean, personally, I don't have a problem with this because I think as a planet as a species we've gone too far away from our ancient traditions of adding fertility symbols to <laughs> absolutely everything that was published in the media i mean sure media has changed from daubings inside caves primitive statuary weird shit in temples and great big plonkers on hillsides but still what is wrong with adding what is of course one of the all-time symbolic icons of human species regeneration the testicle to a new story about the all enveloping darkness coming over the world i've got no no problem with this at all uh i mean nish i can't remember if um in your various tv shows i can't remember if any of them were ever cancelled due to testicles on screen or if it was always something else but um... no we can't blame the balls for that andy <laughs> let's not blame the balls for quibby <laughs> Let, let's blame the idea of what if youtube wasn't free but was worse <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the the full context for this a, a story I imagine has simply inundated the bugle's inbox. <laughs> Chris won't give any of us access to it because he knows what would happen. We'd send out all sort. We'd start replying to a lot of the fan emails with abusive messages. <laughs> but uh, I imagine this is uh, I imagine this is he, Chris has received little else this week. Um, RCG Media's twenty four hour news show uh, was doing a story uh, about the eclipse when the anchors showed clips that had been sent in by fans experiencing the celestial phenomenon only to fall victim to apparently what is and again I, i'm getting this from news.com.au an australian news website so i can only go by uh, the information i'm being given here and as we all know if there's one thing australia can be trusted to do it's produce people that tell the truth in the news media but <laughs> apparently this is a well-known prank in latin america uh, of just uh, just popping your balls out <laughs> uh, and uh, so they uh, they showed clips of people enjoying uh, the eclipse, uh, and then uh, one of the clips uh, had a man dipping his testicles into the frame, <laughs> blocking out the sun. The, <laughs> the ball bag eclipse. And very very few news out outlets were un were able to resist the phrase. Uh, the news outlet aired the man's testicles, which I enjoyed uh, <laughs> very much. But I feel like this is just desserts. This is comeuppance. This is what happens when you have a media that spends 10 f***ing years asking people to join the conversation. You deserve <laughs> to get yeah. teabagged yep. 
from from some prankster. Well, I, but I'm, I'm also I'm struggling to understand the vetting process for this these videos. Presumably, they were not live face. There's no vetting process. People. What vets yeah. mostly do is cut balls off. <laughs> <laughs> so they just received a load of videos and thought, whack that on the air. No, 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 no one's going to have, no one's going to have dropped a couple of balls into these shots. Let's just put them straight on the air. I, it is, in a way, what this person has done with their ball bag is uh, really give us a salutary lesson in the importance of vetting your content. <laughs> Chris would Chris would not simply allow audio clips from the listeners to go on the air. Why would he not allow that? Because he knows our listeners, and he knows that those clips would be obscene beyond belief <laughs> and contain huge amounts of libel about historical figures. <laughs> can you yeah. libel the dead? I'm not sure you can. Can you? You can't. You can libel the dead. I'm not sure you can. I don't oh, know legally. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Pitt the Elder used to take dumps in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, while well, he was in the bath or from the outside of the bath? From the outside. That was his thing. <laughs> Sue me, PTE. You got nothing. Might explain why Pitt the Younger was uh, such an angry man. Um... <laughs> his dad was a bath dumper. <laughs> um, right. Uh... <laughs> How do we get on to <laughs> Willie and Pitt shitting in the bar? Let's get this f***ing show back on track. Right. So we saw uh, Literal Darkness make its pitch uh, this week, but how has Metaphorical Darkness responded? <laughs> well, pretty impressively, actually. The, the Doomsday Clock is uh, well known. We've talked about it on the Google before. It generally hovers around one or two minutes to full-blown midnight, a.k.a. Uh, Armageddon. But I prefer, as a cricket fan, to consult the Doomsday Light Meter. Um, so, exactly what level of doom-laden <laughs> gloom is hoving over the planet right now, threatening the prospect of any further play after tea? Well, uh, looking at it now, well, I think they're definitely going to have to come off. It's, uh, well, I mean, it looks pretty met metaphorically dark on the telly, and it's always actually quite a bit metaphorically darker than it looks uh, in uh, in uh, in reality, of course. It's certainly not safe to face the metaphorical fast bowling of the Middle East or Ukraine wars, and it's not really even fair to try and expect people to take on the wily spin of the environmental crisis. So, frankly, uh, we're f too Was that too crickety? I mean, we had, we had a few complaints, Chris, on the live tour that there was not enough cricket in the show. Um, this is what happens when you don't include North America on the live dates. <laughs> well, people said, oh, we we're hoping for a few more cricket references. Not enough. On every single show, you screamed at yeah. people who didn't like cricket. Oh, no, I did do that, yeah. 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 I did do that. But that didn't, I don't think that made the edit, though, did it? So, <laughs> no, no, fair. Yeah, well, it made the edit in the room, Andy. <laughs> oh yeah, Chris is live bleeping. He's not live editing. <laughs> yeah, I feel like podcasting you... has given me real damage in life because now if I say something I don't mean, or if I'm in an awkward situation, I say, "Don't worry, it won't make the edit." Yeah. <laughs> Try it next time you're making love. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that bit. <laughs> Don't uh, anything I say, Chris. <laughs> I will not be censored by <laughs> So let's look at the uh, what the Middle East um, uh, situation. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it's not fixed itself, disappointingly. <laughs> and Iran attacking Israel, uh, well, it's just what the doctor ordered. But unfortunately, the doctor <laughs> is unqualified and a covert psychopath. Uh, yeah, not yeah, what an actual do doctor. Yeah, it's Dr. Kevorkian. It's what Dr. <laughs> Kevorkian ordered. Um, it's not what an actual doctor would order if the Middle East and indeed all humanity was that doctor's patient. In terms of steps to achieve some sort of potentially durable peace, the idea of Iran attacking Israel, that is about as hope-inducing as turning up at your local swimming pool and seeing Godzilla checking in for his first day as a lifeguard. It's just, it's not, it's hard to be, it's hard to be optimistic at the best of times. There has been some talk of a ceasefire. Uh, with America putting uh, increasing pressure on Israel as the scale of human devastation and suffering continues to increase. But as often in the Middle East, it's not really a case of two steps forward, one step back. It's not even one step forward, two steps back. It's more a slight, potentially forward twitch of the left big toe than repeat Bob Beeman's backwards to a very obvious <laughs> cliff edge. Um, so, uh, Nish, the prospect of uh, Iran getting fully involved in this conflict, um, n not great, I'd say, as a, you know, as as a as a 
as a broad fan of global peace. Yeah, as a as a broad fan of global, I'd describe myself as being not even just a broad fan. I'd describe myself as being a specific fan of global <laughs> peace. I'm a very specific fan of people uh, not shooting at each other. Um, I think um, credit to uh, everybody involved. You've managed to find the one way of making things worse. We were all <laughs> scratching our heads. How can you possibly make this situation worse? How is it possible? And then uh, there was an airstrike conducted uh, on the Iranian consulate in Syria. Uh, Israel is being widely blamed, though it has not officially claimed responsibility for the attack. Um, but everybody involved has managed to uh, find a way to make things uh, worse. Uh, President Joe Biden has promised Israel ironclad uh, support. And given that Israel is run by Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, who, to be absolutely fair to him, is a mad <laughs> Let's be fair to him. <laughs> He's a mad <laughs> uh, Given that he is in charge of Israel, uh, a lot of us would prefer that uh, President Joey B uh, clad his support in a less durable material than iron. <laughs> is it possible he could offer them a wool-clad support? <laughs> is it possible that he could offer them a an invisible cloak of support? It, 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 it's the 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 steps that we're taking here are all uh, as you say andrew in completely the wrong direction um it, biden has said that it has reiterated his urge uh, to netanyahu to call for a ceasefire uh, and has said i think what he's doing is a mistake i don't agree with his approach now i would say as the president of america there is one pretty significant thing you could do uh to help uh, Israel not go down the wrong path. That is, stop buying them weapons. If you were out on a night out with your friend and they had thrown up all over themselves, all over the bar and started three fights, what you would not do is say, I think what you're doing is a mistake. I don't agree with your approach. And then <laughs> buy them another beer. That is not right. what you do under the circumstances. Right. What goes on tour stays on tour, Nish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, <laughs> that may or may not have been drawn from Andy and uh, my night out in Glasgow after a tour show. <laughs> I cannot get into the specifics of it. Look, as we all know, international politics is a team sport in which uh, every country is either a goodie or a baddie. And obviously, uh, when it comes to us versus them, their being dead is less dead-like than yeah. our kind of being dead. <laughs> so my advice, if you don't want to be upset by international policy decisions, is to decide that the people from your country and your country alone are the real people and the rest are just sort of hypothetical people in a point-scoring exercise in your high school's debate club. <laughs> uh, that makes. Well, I think that's explained basically the entirety of human history yeah, in yeah, one yeah. simple <laughs> paragraph, Alice. Well done. <laughs> America trying to go back in time news now. <laughs> And um, Arizona has revived a law from 1864 uh, that bans uh, abortion. And this decision has been criticised by Republicans uh, who passed this law th themselves. So when Republicans have reached the point where they are appalling themselves... <laughs> you know that America has to take a long, hard bath with itself. Ideally, not in a bath from the Pitt family house. Um, so, I mean, I think it's a bit of a risky road for anyone to go down using laws from 1864, particularly yeah. the USA, um, bearing in mind the, what was going on in the USA still in uh, 1864. Matt Gress, a Republican state representative, said, I categorically reject rolling back the clock to a time when slavery was still legal. And we could lock up women and doctors because because of an abortion. Even Carrie Lake, a Republican running to represent Arizona in the Senate and a staunch Trump loyalist, called on the state legislature to come up with an immediate common sense solution that Arizonans can support. Now, when America has reduced Trump supporters to what is beyond their last resort, a call for common sense, you know quite <laughs> how extreme this bit of legislation is. I mean, this is the problem uh, with a lot of Republican politicianing is that they don't want the thing that they say they want. What they want is to be prevented to, from doing the thing that they say they want so that they can raise funds against the people <laughs> who prevented them from doing the thing they said they want. If they get what they want, they're the dog that caught the car. I mean, 
you look at this law, if you've had a look at the law, if, you, if you're a kind of person who looks at laws like a massive nerd like me, you, <laughs> I, I can sum it up for you. Um, it's, a, it's an old-fashioned law. It's a good old-fashioned classic law back from the time where men were men and fetuses were people and women weren't people, but men definitely were, and let's be clear, <laughs> yeah. extremely men. And <laughs> if any of the modern men who long for the time in which men were men were sent back to be men in that time, they would immediately die. They would get syphilis and they would be murdered for being offensively effete by a washerwoman with a rolling pin. <laughs> so, it, The thing that upsets me most about all of this is uh, that uh, when the law was originally passed, Arizona was not even a state. <laughs> so if we're really going back to 1864 and we're really going into states' rights, then Arizona must no longer exist. <laughs> Is there anything that sums up the complicated and almost incomprehensible state of American state legislature that Arizona can now restart a law from a time where it did not exist? <laughs> and I'll tell you what, if we're if we're going back if we're going back to real American originalism, they better start they better start watching their back because the indigenous americans might have something to say and we, 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 for the for the good of america we might have to restart scalping as a day-to-day -day practice <laughs> Go back even further. Let's see what a pterodactyl thinks about it, boy. Come on. Um of course this sort of touches on uh, Roe versus Wade, which to many people is just a simple decision about the best way to cross a shallow river. Um, <laughs> that's uh, with or without a fox, a chicken and some grain. But in America, of course, it's become one of the defining issues of uh, a political uh, identity. And this, this age old belief, Alice, that you mentioned that a woman's womb is an old entitled reactionary legislator's business. And what puzzles me is that you would assume that anti-abortion groups would be the most enthusiastic and committed supporters and funders of freely and easily available contraception. However, that assumption would be the assumption of someone who expects the world to behave with some vague yeah. sense of basic <laughs> logic. And many anti-abortion groups are also anti-contraception, which is like a road safety campaign group calling for the compulsory greasing of all brake pads on vehicles and for all roads to have 50 metre deep <laughs> ditches full of poisonous snakes and sharpened rocks with no barriers to stop cars plummeting into them. It makes no f***ing sense, America. No sense. <laughs> In other American news, Ted Cruz has got a f***ing podcast. Uh, <laughs> I've got a simple message, Ted Cruz. Get the f*** out of my art form! Uh, with, with all due respect, which, of course, when it comes to Ted Cruz, is no respect whatsoever. ever. Um, this is a, a curious story in which Ted Cruz was supposedly doing a, a podcast for no money at all, but it turns out that a, a super PAC affiliated to Cruz um, has been receiving um, hundreds of thousands of dollars in digital revenue uh, from it, um, fueling ethical concerns. Um, now, do ethical concerns still exist in America, or is this a media assumption that there are ethical concerns? Is it in a parallel universe in which America has taken a very different path to the one it has, there would be ethical concerns? This this fuels my ethical concerns, Andy. Why the f*** have I never been paid $215,000 for podcasting? <laughs> I'm a better podcaster than Ted Cruz. I've never heard Ted Cruz podcasting, but I assume that he's never made a joke about the ability of the penis tip to scrape out competitor sperm from vaginas. If you've forgotten, it was with frenulums like these, who needs enemas? I haven't forgotten. I remember it every time I'm sad. <laughs> It makes me happy. <laughs> Truly, that is your Sistine Chapel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, if the tips of both of the fingers were the tips of the penis, that would be. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is. I, I would also join uh, Andrew in expressing my surprise that Ted Cruz has a podcast. Um, I, I really, the word podcast is not one I associate with Ted Cruz. The main words I associate with Ted Cruz are, oh my God. I completely f***ing forgot about Ted Cruz. What a <laughs> what a. <laughs> um, he yeah. So uh, iHeart Media uh, has been paying into uh, a super PAC aligned with uh, Ted Cruz. In fairness to Ted Cruz, he is an asshole, <laughs> and I don't know why 
he, I think the only sub- the only surprise here is that his corruption is taking the form of a podcast. I think we just assumed he was straightforward, skimming off the top in a brown envelope, the old fashioned <laughs> way. What happened to political corruption? Yeah, it's good, got co-opted honest by te- corruption. Good, honest corruption. What happened to just bags of cash, brown <laughs> paper bags filled with money? <laughs> Why is it now being digitally transferred to a super pack? Where's the romance? <laughs> Vinyl's making a comeback. What about the brown bag corruption? Let's get some analog corruption back yeah. in here. Well, maybe that could be the next thing we do on the bugles. We, you know, both of you did the uh, the bugle exclusive subscriber vinyl. Oh, yeah. um, maybe we could do a bugle exclusive <laughs> <laughs> subscriber cash in a brown paper that, bag. That's that's how. <laughs> We want voluntary subscriptions to be delivered now. Yeah. Actually, sorry, I retract that. I retract that immediately <laughs> because, again, I'm well aware, based on the history of the defamation of my Wikipedia page, that if you threaten or offer some sort of avenue for these people, <laughs> no offence, to get involved and do something terrible and stupid, they will do it. So I would like to officially retract. <laughs> How, how's the vinyl coming along, Chris? Are we, uh, have, we, have we got them yet? I actually got an email from them this week saying uh, that they have approved the artwork and right. I will have a, quote, test pressing imminently. Right. Yeah. So I will, right. I will get a very, very special limited edition version it, it, any nice. moment now and I, um, on Orange Vinyl and I'm, I will right. report back soon. So if you so, did sign up for it, it's coming. You should be I, uh, receiving it soon. That's, ve- that's very exciting. Well, listen, Ted Cruz uh, is not the only uh, ex-politician that has a podcast. I, I, I think it's worth just briefly drawing attention to, for, to non-UK listeners to the fact that George Osborne has a podcast. <laughs> uh, George Osborne uh, is the uh, the uh, ex-finance uh, minister, the former Chancellor of the Exchequer, who in uh, the uh, David Cameron administration uh, was responsible for the decisions that mean that nothing in Britain works anymore. The sort of <laughs> programme of austerity that... Uh, uh, hacked uh, the entire British state to bits. Um, it's the reason that the sentence uh, "I took the train to see my doctor" is now a work of science fiction in the United <laughs> Kingdom. Um, but he he has a podcast where he gets to talk about uh, how uh, screwed up Britain is, uh, right. and he does it uh, with an ex politician who's more famous for dressing up as Jim Carrey in the mask and dancing to the song Cuban Pete on Strictly Come Dancing. Uh, so Osborne uh, and Cuban Pete uh, have a podcast uh, and. For a long time, I was really outraged by it. Uh, and now I think of it as a genius piece of marketing because what's popular in podcasting? True crime. <laughs> what, what do none of these true crime podcasts ever do? Get the murderer on. <laughs> it's, it, 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 it's really incredible. You know, there's no Jack the Ripper podcast where Jack the Ripper says, well, you know, I did do a lot of murdering. And I'll tell you what I didn't have time to do while I was murdering <laughs> meal prep. That's why this episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. <laughs> it does seem that basically going into top level politics is now just a means of getting a podcast. Well, and are, are we now reversing that procedure? Is it Zoltzman for PM? Absolutely. I'm ready for it. <laughs> One final story before we go now, and national stereotypes living up to themselves news now. It's turned out um, that, uh, according to a documentary, um, honey trap attempts do not work on French spies because everyone in France is so busy having affairs anyway that the honey, honey trap has no impact. French spies' spouses are used to them having affairs, so there's no point Russia trying to trick French politicians uh, or you know anyone in France, spies, whatever, into having affairs because they'll be having them anyway. Now, national stereotypes were always the entertaining, jovially acceptable side of prejudice. Um, and, you know, that's it's part of prejudice that we've all been able to enjoy whilst not thinking too deeply about. And every now and again, a new story comes along that really taps into our innate elemental human desire to lump people who are from different places from us, together into oversimplified categories to make us feel better about ourselves. It's just who we are as a species, and the sooner we start fighting that, the better. Sorry, worse. Better or worse? What do those words mean, anyway? Anyway, honey traps 
have found their victims even more readily uh, in this age of social media with dating apps and people being able to send pictures of their crunkle chunks and dangle blangles without even having to commission a painter or sculptor like in the old days. That's how Michelangelo, of course, got his interior <laughs> decoration business off the ground back in the day. In Britain, a Tory MP had to resign the party whip after being online honey-trapped and sharing contact details of his colleagues. I, I do assume that is item one, two or three on things not to f- do if you're an MP on day <laughs> one in Parliament, along with don't tweet the nuclear codes and never say what you actually mean. But France <laughs> is impermeable to the honey trap, and I think we should we should raise a glass of uh, what the French would call red wine uh, to uh, France <laughs> and appreciate how sometimes the national stereotype can do the world a favour. I love it's I love tip. it so much. It's, it's got Russian spies. It's got French. People being louche, you know, it's got someone going, I'll reveal your secret, and some Frenchman going, Boeuf, I already told my wife about my mistress. Every second Thursday they catch up and bitch about my weird penis. My mistress buys my wife birthday presents. In fact, they are both having une affaire avec each other, and also my best friend. If you do not have a mistress as a Frenchman, Gérard Depardieu comes with a mouthful of coco vin, spits it directly into your mouth, and then he has an affair with your wife. You cannot threaten me. So this all comes from a, a documentary that is being made about spying. And the real quote is, uh, like, alarmingly close to what you have just done as an act of satire. <laughs> it's, it, a, a DGSE agent identified only as Nicholas it said in the documentary uh, that the honey traps don't work because the agent generally said, go ahead, show her, she'll understand, or she already knows about it. It is, <laughs> we are in a wafer thin line between satire and reality with this story. Ah uh-huh, ha ha, the f***er has been out f***ed. <laughs> <laughs> it's like finding out British spies are not in danger of poisoning because none of their food is seasoned enough. <laughs> well, that brings us to the end of this week's uh, Bugle. Thank you very much uh, for listening. Uh, don't forget, there are a couple of London shows, live shows, in June, the 7th and 8th of June, at the Leicester Square Theatre. Uh, Nish will be doing one. Alice, you're doing the screen for those, I think. And uh, NATO Green will be physically in London uh, for one of those shows uh, as well. So do buy all of the remaining tickets for those shows. If you want to join the Bugle Voluntary Subscription Scheme to help keep this show free, flourishing and independent, go to thebuglepodcast.com and click the donate button to make a one-off or a current contribution. Um, Subscribers also get access to the monthly world-exclusive Ask Andy show when I... uh, uh, obtusely answer some of the questions you send in. Um, Alice, anything to plug? Uh, I have a book. It's called uh, It's on Unbound. If you write my name into Unbound, it's called The Dancy Lagarde Reader. I Also, you can find me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Alice Fraser, where we do weekly writers' meetings um, and salons where you come in and have a chat and that you get that for a dollar a month at the moment or more. I mean, you can pay more. I would prefer it if you paid more. <laughs> <laughs> also got a podcast called The Gargle, which is oh. the sonic glossy magazine to this Bugle's audio newspaper. So if you want all of the news but somewhat less of the depressing politics, it's all <laughs> there at The Gargle. Nish? Uh, I've got a huge amount to plug, and as you can tell by the fact that I'm prevaricating over this, it's because I'm frantically Googling myself for the details. <laughs> um, I The one thing, the thing that I do know is uh, my uh, last show, uh, Your Power, Your Control, which I filmed, is now available globally on all platforms. Uh, so you can buy it on uh, iTunes and Amazon and whatever, whichever platform it is you interact with video. I think there's a bit of YouTube apparently you can pay for. That was all news to me. Uh, it's been completely released by the people of Comedy Dynamics. And also it is available as an album uh, on Spotify and Apple Music and Tidal, which I'm hoping means that I get to meet Jay-Z, but I don't think it does. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah, so you can access all, all, that show on all platforms. And on Monday, the 22nd of April, I'll be doing a stand up show in Berlin. So if there are any Berlin based buglers, any ick benign buglers, that are doing a gig at the Quarch Comedy Club uh, in Berlin on Monday, the 22nd of April. Uh, and tickets are available on ticketmaster.de. Um, I also have a stand up tour beginning in November. Dates almost confirmed. And <laughs> I will. I hope possibly at some point update my website with some actual dates rather than uh, some dates from gigs f***ing years ago. Um, but anyway, so keep stay tuned. 
<laughs> Stay tuned, buglers. But anyway, it'll be uh, yeah, it's uh, it's quite a long tour. This seems to stretch endlessly into next year. Uh, so details forthcoming at some point quite soon. Uh, until next week, buglers. Goodbye. <laughs>